that every child of God is ordained by God to be a wonder to his or her world. Say, me I'm ordained. Louder, I'm ordained. As a wonder to my world. But it is the love of God that makes great things happen on their own accord. The love of God that walk in the heart of a man, the heart of a woman, is what makes great things to happen on their own accord. When you look at a lover of God, you cannot organize the happenings in his life. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 that all things work together for good to them that love God. When you find a lover of God, you cannot organize the happenings of their lives. The things around their lives look like a mystery. Because all things around them keep working for their good. That's what happens as a lover of God. So the love of God is what causes great things to begin to happen on their own accord. This is because through love we are grafted into the vine that is God. And we begin to manifest the virtues of exploits without struggle. When you find a lover of God, they manifest the divine virtue of exploits without needing to struggle for it. The Bible gives us a picture in Romans chapter 11 beginning from verse 17. We are told there, it says that if some of the branches were broken off and thou being a wild olive were grafted among them and with them you became partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So there is a grafting in that allows a person to take part of the root and the fatness. When you go through the agricultural process of grafting, what happens is they take the branch of a particular plant or tree and graft it into another tree. The moment that branch comes on the new tree, what flows through the branch is the virtues inside the new tree into which it belongs. When a man is in love with God, that man, as it were, is grafted into God. So what flows through his life is what flows through God. And there is nothing around God that is ordinary. Everything around God is extraordinary. That's why we talk about the virtues of exploits. And you find out that a branch does not struggle to produce fruit. You have never gone to a farm and hear groaning taking place and they say, what is happening? It's because the branches are trying to produce fruit. No. A farm is quiet even though it is producing fruit. I say all the time when you go to the labor room where children are born, you hear noise. When you go to the farm where fruits are born, you hear silence. There is no need for struggle when you are grafted into the vine. That's what happens when a man is grafted into the vine. When his love and his heart for God is confirmed, exploits become the sweatless, you know, manifestation of his life. I see that becoming somebody's experience from now in the name of Jesus. That is why you discover that lovers of God, they always wonder to their world. He said, I had not seen, he had not heard, it has not entered into the heart of man the things that God has, has prepared for them that love him. So the lovers of God will always end up as the one that manifests as wonders into their world. So as children of God, we have potential for wonders. As lovers of God, we begin to manifest wonders. For somebody hearing my voice this morning, from this season onward, the wonders of God will be practically manifested in your life. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. But any love without proof is fake. Love must have evidence. Love must have proofs. Love must have manifestations. There are evidences of our genuine love for God. And it's important for us to understand that all through scripture we discover that serving God and the interests of his kingdom is a vital proof of our love for God. Serving God and the interests of his kingdom is a vital proof of our love for God. It is a vital proof. Love without proofs is fake. And one of the vital proofs of our love for God is serving God and the interests of the kingdom. Serving God. 
we are loaded with unusual potentials as believers but when our love for god begins to take shape and begins to have proofs and evidences you begin to find the potentials inside of you and i finding full expression my prayer is that that will become my experience from now in the name of jesus now very quickly this morning what is love what is love in our context love for god is number one placing god above all else including self placing god above all else including self luke chapter 14 verse 26 and 27 look at what the bible tells us here he says if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yea and his own life also he cannot be my disciple what am i talking about whosoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple so jesus was talking about the comparative placement where do you put god you can't prefer anything above god including yourself so genuine love for god is placing god above all else including self no one can claim to love god until he takes a back seat to god in the priority of his life no one can claim to love god until he or she takes a back seat to god in the priority of his life this is so vital and very important so it is about loving him above all else including oneself it is when one chooses to decrease and allow god to increase that he or she increases in the journey of life john says something in john chapter 3 and verse 30 he said i must decrease and he must increase no wonder we are told using the example of jesus in philippians 2 beginning from verse 5 he said let this mind be in you that was also in christ jesus he said who thought it not robbery to be equal with god he said but he made himself of no reputation taking the back seat and projecting god putting god in front in every priority of life every decision of life that is what it means to be a lover of god a lover of god god first god first god first every other thing lining up behind god that's what it means to genuinely love god so loving god is not equal to liking god there are many people who simply associate with god because they want to secure the manifestations of god no loving god means preferring god above all else god first god in front god at the up at the up uppermost in the decision priority of our lives that's what it means to genuinely love god so the question is this if i claim to love god the question is where does he stand in my list of priorities is there something before him or is everything else behind him including yourself shout hallelujah i say shout hallelujah if you check those whose heart for god is confirmed by the placement of god in their heart you will discover that they naturally stand out on the earth john chapter 12 verse 23 down to verse 26 jesus speaking he said the hour for the son of man to be glorified is come he said but except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die it abideth alone but if it dies it will bring forth much fruit he that loveth his life will lose it but he that hated his life in this world shall keep it in unto life eternal look at verse 26 if any man serve me let him follow me where i am there shall my servant be if any man will serve me in this pattern he said him will my father honor when a man places god at the top of his list that man becomes at the top of god's list Please hear this and hear it very well. God does not respond to everyone at the same frequency. 
the frequency at which God responds to you and responds to me is determined by the frequency of our heart for him. Where is he placed in our hearts? Where is he placed in our hearts? Number two is a kingdom priority lifestyle. So first, it's about placing God above all else. But second, it's about the kingdom above all else. Having the kingdom as the priority. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. If you check through scriptures, you will discover that kingdom mindedness is one of the vital evidences of genuine love for God. Kingdom mindedness. A man or woman that claims to love God will be mindful of the kingdom. Their mind will be saturated by the matters of the kingdom. They can't be passive on kingdom matters. When what moves God does not move you, you can't claim to love God. Every genuine lover of God is moved by the things that move the heart of God. When a man's heart is united with God, the matters of God's heart becomes the matters of that man's heart. That is the evidence. That is the evidence of genuine love for God. It is a kingdom priority lifestyle. No wonder Paul the Apostle when he was speaking in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 and verse 8 speaking of his own testimony he made this statement. He said I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said henceforth there is laid on up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give unto me in that day and not to me only but unto all them that love his appearing. He was talking about those whose hearts were after him and the evidence of his heart after God was how he engaged with God. The advancement of the kingdom of God that is why you discover that every genuine lover of God is always excited at the matters of advancing the kingdom of God. Their heart is united with God. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. This is so important. Their heart is united with God. Whatever matters to God matters to them. You see, you look at within families, for example, you have a husband and a wife, and perhaps the husband comes into the house and is quiet. He doesn't say anything. He has not spoken his heart, but the wife looks at his face and knows something is disturbing the, this man's heart. The wife that loves the husband becomes disturbed on the behalf of the husband because of what is inside his heart. Now, God looks at the lost and is disturbed about the lost. If you and I have our hearts united with God, we can't look at the lost and be silent about the lost. Our heart becomes disturbed. No, this soul cannot go to hell. This destiny cannot be crushed. As a result of that, when a man's heart is after God, the kingdom becomes a natural priority. It is first above all else. Shout hallelujah. I see grace coming upon each one of us to live a kingdom first lifestyle. Somebody believe and say loud amen. I said, somebody believe and say loud amen. Now, what is a love that engenders breakthroughs? What is a love that engenders breakthroughs? Number one, love enhances access to revelation. Love enhances access to revelation. John 15, 15, Jesus said, I call you no more servants, but I call you friends. Why? He said, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made them known unto you. Revelation. Revelation. Revelation is a vital currency of destiny. For anyone that will experience a revolution, the trigger is revelation. For anyone that will experience a revolution, the trigger is revelation. No one's life changes face until that man's life encounters light. 
2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, it said, We all, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Please hear me this morning. Life does not change with time. Life changes with light. It is the revelation that we acquire that determines the position that we secure. Revelation. And revelation is at the mercy of our heart for God. Please hear this this morning. It is not perspiration that equals revelation. It is affection for God that gives access to revelation from God. The word of God is pregnant with secrets. But the secrets of God are only unveiled to the lovers of God. Those who love God are the ones who enjoy access to the secrets of God. Those who love God. And when those secrets begin to be unleashed in the direction of a man's life, that man is elevated as a wonder to his world. Look at what the Bible tells us, Isaiah chapter 60, beginning from verse 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, for darkness will cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. He said, Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Verse 8, who are these that fly as the cloud, and as the doves? to their windows. Let's go to verse 10 and look at what it begins to tell us from verse 10 onward. It says, And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I have had mercy upon thee. Look at verse 11. It said, Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. Verse 15. He said, though you were forsaken and hated, he said, yet I will make thee an eternal excellency, the joy of many generations. Verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation and I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. When there is light, there is speed. When there is light, there is speed. But what gives you and I access to this revelation is our affection for God. Please hear this. It is not the one who has intellectual intelligence that gains access to divine secrets. It is the one who has a heart for God. Light in the kingdom is accessed by the heart, not the mind. Light is accessed by the heart. That is why it is possible to be a PhD holder, a professor, and yet lack revelation. Revelation is at the mercy of our heart for God. I pray this morning that by the encounter we are having here today, our heart will come alive for God today. As a result of that, the kind of light that will change your world will come your way in the name of Jesus. You believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Number two, love empowers faith to deliver maximally. Love empowers faith to deliver maximally. Galatians 5 verse 6. The Bible tells us there, it says, with love, with faith, walk it by love. Faith which work it by by love. Faith cannot deliver without love. First Corinthians 13 and verse 2. Look at what the Bible tells us here. First Corinthians 13 2. And do I have the gift of prophecy? And understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And do I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity? I am nothing. Somebody said it this way, that what a battery is to an equipment is what love is to faith. You know, there are various sizes of equipment, serious equipment. If you go to the ark, you will see some heavy cranes. There's some of the equipment there that I've never seen 
that size of equipment in my life heavy it can move what you may call mountains but if you remove the battery as big as it is it becomes useless no matter how big your faith if it lacks the battery of love it becomes useless the usefulness of our faith is determined by the potency of our love and you agree with me that the bigger the equipment the more vital the amount of power in the battery some equipments go down not because the battery is totally dead but because the power source inside the battery is not sufficient so it means that if you want faith to move mountains then you need the kind of love that is mountain moving kind of love the battery that you have for this microphone is not the same one you put inside a bulldozer both of them are called battery but each one has a different level of work you want your faith to work and grow your love your love for god is the battery of your faith is the battery of your faith so you and i must understand that yes we have a responsibility to cultivate and develop our faith but not at the expense of our love our love is a vital facilitator for the delivery of our faith number three love facilitates answers to our prayers love facilitates answers to our prayers love facilitates answers to our prayers he said the lord's ear is not heavy that he cannot hear his arm is not short that he cannot save but iniquity has put a gap between you and me that i cannot hear or save isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 psalm 66 verse 18 and verse 19 look at what the word of god tells us here look at what it says it says i cried unto him with my mouth and he was extolled with my tongue verse 18 and 19 please in particular if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me he said but verily god has helped me he has attended to the voice of my prayer who was talking there david who is david the man after god's own heart if I regard iniquity, that would be the blockage between me and God. But when I switch away from iniquity, I connect my heart to God and make myself a genuine lover of God. And what is the effect of that? Suddenly, swift answers begin to come in my direction. Remember I said that God does not respond to every individual at the same frequency. Our love for God determines the frequency of response we get from him so it facilitates answers to prayer it facilitates answers to prayer shout hallelujah second chronicles 16 and verse 9 look at what the bible tells us it says that the eye of the lord goes to and for the earth looking for a man whose heart is perfect towards him he said to show himself strong on their behalf god is always looking for how to show up on the behalf of those who are genuine lovers the lovers of god will always attract the attention of god shout hallelujah the lovers of god will always attract the attention of god number four love enhances our access to wisdom from above it enhances our access to wisdom from above the wisdom of god is made available to the lovers of god we have an example in david david's only credential was his heart for god his heart for god that was his only credential he was a shepherd boy a boy without recognition not even in the family when they asked for all the sons of jesse to be brought out david was forgotten you know i thought that normally in a family if they are going to look for a child first you normally look for the last born to make sure that because those are the ones that can easily get lost but they said jesse bring all your sons but david was so relegated that they have forgotten that he was one of the sons after all the sons passed 
Saul said, I mean, Samuel said, is there no other son? Because none of this, God has not selected any one of these. The father said, yes, so there's another one. I don't think that's the one you are looking for. If it's king you are looking for, it's not that one. There is nothing kingly about him. He's, t- he's only with animals for money. He doesn't even see people. They said, go and bring him from the wilderness. We will not sit down till he comes. And here came David. No recognition in the family. But heaven recognized him. Is somebody getting what God is saying? When a person's heart goes after God, God also goes after him. And one of the deposits God makes on the life of such individuals is wisdom. Look at what the Bible tells us concerning David in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14 and verse 30 among others. He behaved himself very wisely. Where did this man get this wisdom? From all indication, David was not educated. He was a shepherd boy. But yet, he had the wisdom of God deposited upon him because of his heart for God. When a man's heart goes after God, God downloads his wisdom upon that individual's life. That becomes somebody's experience here. And the wisdom of God is what makes a man a solution bearer to the world. When a man carries wisdom, he becomes sought after. Wise men, people forget their background. When they find a man of wisdom, he carries solutions. So people forget their background. All through scripture, we see men whose backgrounds were forgotten. They brought Joseph from prison. A slave that was demoted to an enslaved prisoner. And they brought him to the palace. And the Bible says, after Joseph concluded speaking, here is the word that was spoken by Pharaoh. Genesis 41, verse 38 to 41. It says, and Pharaoh said to his servant, can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of God is he said for as much as God has shown you all these things there is none so discreet and wise as thou art thou shall be over my house and according to my word, thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Now, hear this. Egypt was the greatest nation in that time. Joseph came as a slave into Egypt. By slavery law, he's not even considered a standard human being. But here comes one that they don't even consider as equal to ordinary men. But because of the extraordinary wisdom of God, he was elevated to be over the king. If you hear what the Bible says concerning Joseph in Genesis 40, um, 45 and verse 8, he said, God has made me a father to Pharaoh. He has made me a father to Pharaoh. Wisdom catapulted him to the top. There is somebody hearing me today. The wisdom of God that will come in a deluge upon your life will catapult you to the top. There are heights that you cannot even imagine attainable that God's wisdom will move you into. And we are in the days where wisdom is needed more than ever before. Because in these days, the earth will burn like an oven. And all the proud and all that do wickedly will be as trouble. We have seen shakings on the earth in recent times. Unusual shakings. Unusual shakings. Nations that used to be the epitome of stability. Getting into all kinds of confusion. The heart of strong men being shaken. By the happenings that are taking place on the earth. We are living in strange times. We are living in strange times. Just uh, late last year we saw how that in the United Kingdom. The economy shook to the point that. There was so much fear. The shortest stint of a prime minister, the prime minister had to be checked out of office very fast. The shortest stint of a prime minister in office because of shakings. We saw banks begin to close. One of the banks that closed just this year is one of the longest standing banks and largest banks in the world. Economic shakings in first world countries. Shakings on every side. 
that's what we are seeing and that's why wisdom is needed the pride of the world is being humbled one by one so wisdom is required now because that is going to be the trademark of the end time saints by the wisdom of god will come and they are an attraction to our world they will look for solution among us they will find answers among us somebody believe it say loud amen yeah. that to be our experience in the name of jesus i said that to be our experience in the name of jesus yeah. now today is our covenant day of business breakthroughs we're going to be looking very quickly at something very important that will help us to position for breakthroughs god's servant said that early in his christian adventure the lord taught him something and that is the fact that if you want to go anywhere look for those who have gone there and follow after their steps simple formula if you want to go anywhere look for those who have gone there and just follow their steps hebrews 6 verse 12 the followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise if you want the promise check those who acquired it check those who attained it and in scriptures we have a perfect example of one who attained the promise of breakthrough and that was abraham so we're going to be examining the keys to accessing Abrahamic order of generational breakthrough in business. The keys to accessing the Abrahamic order of generational breakthroughs in business. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. It's important to note that we are redeemed to command the Abrahamic order of business breakthrough, among other things. We are told in the book of Galatians 3 and verse 29 that if we are Christ, then we are Abraham's seed and we are heirs according to the promise. If we are Christ's, then we are Abraham's seed. And we discover concerning Abraham that Abraham was the picture of blessing in the Old Testament. And that blessing is our portion as believers. Galatians 3 verse 13 and 14 he said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and has redeemed us into the blessing of Abraham. But we must follow the works of Abraham in order to see the blessings of Abraham. So we are going to be looking at some of the vital steps that Abraham took. Because if we take the same steps, we can get the same result. Number one, Abraham was a friend or lover of God. He was a friend of or love of God. James chapter 2 verse 23, we are told there the Bible calls Abraham God's friend. The friend of God. He was a lover of God. And remember we said all things work together for good to them that love God. Love can be said to be the maker of the destiny of man. All things work together for good to them that love God. So Abraham was a lover of God. And the effect of it on his life was that he became a living wonder. He became the epitome of breakthrough. Number two, Abraham was a man of faith. He was a man of faith. And we see this all through the scripture, but particularly in the book of Romans chapter 4. And I will take just verse 19 to 21 in particular. When you, have, when you get back home, read it from verse 10. He said, who against hope? believed in hope that he should become the father of many nations and not being weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither the deadness of Sarah's womb he said but he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God being fully persuaded that what God had promised he was also able to perform Abraham was not a man that was shaken by circumstances the things that were happening did not shake his heart. He was a man full of faith. A man of faith. And I'd like you to understand that if we are going to become partakers of the breakthrough experience of Abraham, then you and I must also become men and women of faith. Don't let the economy determine your countenance. No. Let your faith be intact. The language of faith people is different from those who are not faith people. Non-faith people discuss the happenings. Faith people discuss the scriptures. They talk from God's perspective. Those who are non-faith people, they explain what they can see. 
but faith people declare what they want to see. They don't speak the occurrences. Abraham was not considering his own body. He was not considering what was against him. No. His heart was fixed on God. That's what it means to be in faith. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. So you want to experience the kind of breakthrough Abraham experienced, then you and I must ensure that we build our faith. We build our faith. We build our faith. Shout hallelujah. We must cultivate, develop our faith in order to deliver our desires. Number three, he was a servant of God. Abraham was a servant of God. Psalm chapter 105 verse 42. The Bible calls him a servant. And what does the Bible tell us about servants? He said if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 36 and verse 11. So we discover that this man was a servant of God. Who is a servant? One who obeys. You are a servant to whatever you obey. Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Abraham was a servant of God. Everything God said, Abraham obeyed without question. Without question. Everything God said. So if you and I are going to enjoy the breakthrough of Abraham, then you and I must become servants like Abraham. For example, God is speaking in this season. Very clearly. Operation by all means. That means by all means, go after them. By all means. As we obey him, we begin to enjoy the breakthroughs that Abraham enjoyed. I see that becoming somebody's experience. Yes. Number four, he was a man of integrity. Abraham was a man of integrity. He said in the book of Genesis 14, verse 21 to 24, when the king of Sodom came to him, he said, I will not take the strand or a string out of the shoe latchet that belongs to you. He says, lest thou say that I have made Abraham rich. I will not take anything that is not my own. A man of integrity. You see, we must understand that there is no crooked way to get to a divine place. You can't manipulate your way to the top. A man that will enjoy divine breakthrough is a man that will operate by unshakable integrity. Job 27. Look at this from verse 1 to 5. About the man Job. Look at how, how committed he was to integrity. He said, moreover, Job continued his parable and said, look at it. As God liveth, who taketh away my judgment and the almighty which had vexed my soul. Verse 3, he said, and, with, with, and while my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils, he said, I will not, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. He said in verse 5, God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove my integrity from me. Till I die. I will not remove my integrity from me. Please hear this. Integrity is not situational. A man of genuine integrity is stable on the truth no matter the consequence. Stable on the truth no matter the consequence. That was Abraham. I won't join anything. I've lifted up my hand before the Lord. I will not take whatever belongs to you. That was Abraham. As a result of that, we saw his breakthrough. Number five, he was a liberal soul. He was a liberal soul. We saw how Lot chose all the watered parts of the land and left Abraham to all the desert parts of the land. Abraham was not contending with him. In fact, when Lot got into trouble, it was Abraham that went to deliver him to show that he was a liberal soul. He stood in front of his tent, Genesis chapter 18, and he saw people passing by and ran after them to bring, just to be hospitable to them, to see how to do good to them. He was a man of liberality. You can't be liberal and not prosper. Proverbs 11 verse 24 and 25, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall be watered unto. Number six, he was a corporate tither. <laughs> he was a corporate tither. He paid the tithes of all. All of what? Not only what belonged to him, but what belonged to his company as a whole. He was a corporate tither. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. A corporate tither. A corporate tither. That was one of the vital keys that brought him to unusual dimension of breakthrough. 
corporate tithe. I remember one of us was sharing with me some time ago. How he began engaging with this corporate tithing. He said all kinds of breakthrough. He said, Pastor, I cannot understand. He said, breakthrough on every side. I'm getting all manner of open doors. He said, in fact, what I do now is that I calculate more of my tithe so I don't make mistake. He said, so in my office they know that when we calculate tithe, we put on top of it in case there is any money that we forgot to count. And add it as our corporate tithe. He said, and God is just blessing. God is just blessing. God is just blessing. Dangerous blessings. Just by engaging this mystery. And finally, number seven, he was a man given to sacrifice. God asked him for his son. The greatest sacrifice anyone can be asked for. And Abraham, without hesitation, went forth. Remember, sacrifice is the key to turn around. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we're like them that dream. Turn it again as the stream of the Zion. Those that go with tears shall return with joy. Psalm chapter 126, verse 1 to 6. My prayer today is that by the encounter you and I have had upon this mountain, none of us, none of us, none of us will be excluded from God's victory program. That Abrahamic order of breakthrough shall become our experience. Lift your hand to heaven and give thanks to God for his word we have received this morning. Father, thank you for your word. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed.